and extra nurses into our public hospitals. Question number 10, Holly Walker. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Housing and asks, does he stand by his answer to written question 04915-2012? where he stated that the Housing New Zealand Corporation does not distinguish between response and completion times for maintenance requests. The Honourable Phil Heatley. Um, yes, uh, Mr Speaker. However, after I spoke with a member last night who raised this question, I checked with the Corporation, and they tell me that this arises from the nature of their relationship with regional contractors, who in turn let work to subcontractors. The Corporation informs me that they hold the main contractor responsible for delivering the performance expectations which I outlined yesterday. They don't necessarily have visibility of what subbies are doing. So a subby may uh, respond to a job on Monday and complete it on Monday, or they might respond to a job on Monday but complete it on Tuesday. The important thing for the Corporation is that the job is completed. Holly Walker. Thank you, Mr Speaker. So when he told the House yesterday that 93% of urgent health and safety jobs are completed within four hours, did he actually mean that Housing New Zealand had simply responded to those requests in some way, not that the work had actually been completed? The Honourable Phil Heatley. Uh, yeah, well, my uh, advice from the Corporation is that that measure is about completion. Um, so they would expect an urgent health and safety job to be completed within four hours. And um, if that was not done, then the contractor would be outside the agreement. And as I indicated yesterday, 93 per cent uh, are, and, uh, was, or 7 per cent aren't, therefore, and therefore the contractor would be held to account for this. And if there are cases of that, and clearly there are some, um, then I think the corporation should know about them, and I'd love to hear from the member. Holly Walker. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Is it acceptable that the request of a Wellington mother who asked for large holes in her lounge floor to be repaired in August 2011 would be included in that 93 per cent after a mere phone call from Housing New Zealand when in fact she had to wait more than seven months for the holes to be fixed and still has issues with mould and rotten carpet on the floor that have led her children to develop skin infections. The Honourable yeah. Phil and, um, and I accept that that may very well be the case. I know the member is um, sincere on this issue. The reality is in that situation, if that is the case, Housing New Zealand wouldn't be working to their own standard and contractors wouldn't be working to Housing New Zealand's standard and they needed need to know about that case and investigate it. Holly Walker. Isn't there a big difference between answering a call or engaging a contractor or subcontractor and actually ensuring that the work is completed? And what is the average time that elapses between when an urgent health and safety job is lodged and the work is actually completed? The Honourable Phil Heatley. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, as I outlined, uh, Housing New Zealand requires uh, certain types of urgent or non-urgent maintenance to occur within a time frame, for example, urgent health and safety work. So that it, the work has to be done within four hours. If it's done in two hours or three hours or four hours, Housing New Zealand doesn't necessarily have visibility on this, because that's a subcontractor's job more often than not. What they have visibility is if it's completed within the four hour time frame. So you cannot measure an average time. What you can measure is whether a contractor directly has met the standards that Housing New Zealand has set. If they haven't, um, Housing New Zealand want to know about it, and I want to hear from the members so I can pass that on. Question number, or oh, supplementary Speaker? question, Honourable Anne Atkin. Very good. I am going to talk about Lino. The Honourable Annette King. Is he aware? Is he aware it took four years? Order. Oh. order. Point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Great. My, my colleague on my right just made an outrageous suggestion about one of our colleagues, and I think he should withdraw and apologise. <laughs> order, I, the Speaker did not hear it, and the member's lucky. The Honourable Annette King. Thank, thank you, Mr Speaker. Is he aware it took four years to have the hole in the lino replaced before he didn't visit Simon Street, Auckland? And is that the standard he expected when he campaigned against slum landlords in opposition? The Honourable Phil Heatley. Uh, Mr Speaker, as I made, out, uh, as I made clear uh, yesterday, as far as I'm aware, the member made up... Oh. I apologise to the Minister. Look, I say to the Labour front benches on this occasion, 
That noise is unnecessary. <laughs> the Honourable Phil Heatley. Um, as I said yesterday in the House, Mr Speaker, as far as I'm aware, the member made up uh, the idea that I visited uh, Simon Street and she made up the idea that there's been no maintenance. So I don't think this House or journalists can take uh, the member at her word in any scenario. Oh, order. No, no, no. Order. No, order. I'm on my feet. I'm on my feet. Now that to suggest that a member's word cannot be taken is, is out of order. I ask the Minister to withdraw that and to actually uh, come now closer to answering the question. If I recollect correctly, the, mem the Minister was asked about uh, the time uh, delay between uh, well, the time involved in getting this, this famous piece of lino laid on, at this particular location. And I don't think the Minister actually even approached answering that. So I'd ask the Minister to withdraw yep. that comment and answer the question. Yep. No, I withdraw and I apologise. Um, Mr Speaker, I have no confidence in the information the member is giving the House, and so I can't comment. Question number 11, Darian Fenton. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker.